What's up everybody, Brett here bringing you back for episode 2 of our Kingdom Rush Let's Play. As of this episode, we now have heroes unlocked. We have Sir Gerald Lightseeker, and he's going to join us in the next fight. So we're on stage 4. All of our upgrades are done, and we're going to be on Twin Rivers. Now this is one of the first maps that becomes a little bit more challenging. It's not a straightforward easy choke point defense map so it's a little more tactically interesting. And let me go ahead and read the story here. Enemy troops are marching from the east through Stonecliff Mountains. This clan this can only mean that our kingdom's capital is in peril. Our scouts conclude that the best place to stop our enemy's advance is at the Twin Rivers Pass. So to battle. And awesome. So here we unlock the new towers tier 3 and we can try and go for them this battle although in my experience I usually end up getting lots of level 2 towers on this map but we can try and get a level a level 3 tower so this is gonna be new for me controlling the hero unit on the PC version it is a little bit different So let's see what we get. For the king. Let's make a bit of a Helm's Deep here. Get these guys as far to the left as possible. And we want to make sure that no one's going to be skirting around us in any direction. But that we are still mostly fighting under our Dwarven Bombards. And our hero unit does buff up our soldiers. So having him in the front and the center here is going to get him lots of value. Heroes do level. You'll see right now he's level 1. Let's read this tip real quick. Maybe it'll say some of the things I'm about to say. So we can hit spacebar. That's good to know. And we just click on the path. Health and experience every time they damage an enemy or use an ability so you want them to be at the front of the fight especially early on we don't want to keep him back here for no reason there's there's no point we want him to get experience we want by the end of this for him to be a high level because he'll start using uh, better versions of his abilities okay let's finish placing some towers here Let's see how that does. And we're going to drop our reinforcements right on top of him probably every time. And there we go. He's already level 2. So that's solid. Let's make sure our footmen are in range of this tower. Want to be calling units early. And let's kill these orcs. Nice and easy. Big kills. Let's upgrade our dwarven artillery. We can pull our guys back just a little bit to make sure our artillery fires. Hero is level 3, and he's leveling quickly because he's staying in the fight. Going to reinforce, call the next wave, reinforce. Going to make that too easy. And let's upgrade our footmen. They're our first line of defense. We want them to be strong. Now, we should be seeing a new enemy this map. One who does really well against footmen. So let's do that and call again. So relying heavily on our squishy soldiers is not going to be how we win this. Let's make another little kind of three-way choke point here. We unlocked an achievement, Champion of Lanaria. We did get a level 5 hero. It's 
probably what that's alluding to. So, you just buffed all of our guys. They have medium armor and they do more damage. So they're almost, they're basically tier 3 equivalent right now and they're only tier 2. And we can make these guys knights. If we want. But I think we're going to need, very soon here, we're going to need more single target damage. So let's make sure we have that. Our hero is doing great. This is one of those maps, so I think there's a, a secret on here. Something to do with the fish, but I don't remember what it is. Could be wrong, though. When you play as many of these as I have, you, they all start to kind of blend together. In a good way. Let's call reinforcements. Call early. Level 6 hero. And here we go. These are our new enemies, the bandits. They have really high attack damage. They are squishy, but they'll they'll take out our reinforcements and they'll two shot these weak little uh, little recruits here. We just want to hold them in place, let our archer towers do some work. Let's try not to leak here. Some of the up upcoming waves are a little more difficult. We don't want to leak on the easy waves, that's for sure. And let's back it up. Fight under this. The mage tower has high single target damage. to not leak there with a little quick tower placement. Really want to get rid of these healers. So let's do that. Lower the cooldown on our reign of fire. And we do have an ogre here. Our hero is level 7 now and he does, let's see what his stats are. Click on him. 20 to 33 damage and medium armor. And he has a pretty good health pool kill some of these guys before they kill all of our soldiers. Give our boys a chance. And he's just in the front lines. He's soaking damage. Doing damage. And let's get a tier 3 here. The howitzer. It's got even better range. So it's going to be able to hit these guys as soon as they, they cross into this threshold here. And I mean it maxes out at 66 damage a shot, which is huge. Level 8 on our hero. Let's try and make another little 3 tower checkpoint here. Achievement unlocked the architect. Summon, call early, summon again. Another new enemy, the brigand. Armored outlaws that can withstand a lot of punishment. Average speed, medium armor. So it, it's even showing us in the, the picture here a little hint. It's like build mage towers, they have medium armor. So we have a few of those about the map. And we're going to be looking to upgrade some of them shortly here. call some guys early. Level 9. And it does go up to level 10, your hero. Wouldn't be surprised if he just made it to level 10. Well placed mortar there. I 
let's go ahead and upgrade our minions. These guys are doing lots of fighting. Let's get them to, to tier 3 and we can see how strong they are with the paladin buffs. See there, they just wore off, but they do do more damage. It doesn't seem to be buffing their, their armor past medium, which is fine, I think that's fair. Having high armor at this point means they basically can't be touched, but we're doing great damage. Let's get a tier 3, the sharpshooter tower, show you what that's all about. This is a good place for another one. And let's drop some fire. Get rid of all those medium armor guys. And we really want to get rid of these healers. We don't like leaving them forever. They, they just sponge so much damage when they heal each other. Legend of Lanaria. We got a level 10. We can check out his stats here. He has high armor at level 10. This is his respawn timer. So were he to die, it would take 15 seconds for him to come back. Anything we want to get to rank 3? And I think that's it. It's the last enemy here. And let's see if we can do it. Boom. Okay. Home improvement, another achievement. Probably from, from putting all of our towers at rank 3. And we have 3 stars. Excellent. And just like last episode, we're going to endeavor to knock out the Iron Mode and Heroic Mode challenges so that we can maximize the amount of stars we have before our next stage. So let's see what the limitations here. Upgrades level 2 and no heroes. Okay, so let's unlock our final second tier upgrade and it's Scorched Earth, sets the ground on fire for five seconds. Really good at aerial denial, really solid against low tier enemies. Um, and yeah, we don't want to go past our tier two upgrades because they won't count for these challenges. Let's actually try the iron mode first. It doesn't let us use mage towers or bombards. So very focused. And once again, no heroes. For honor and glory. For the king. Mm. Dodge this. Charge. It gives us a ton of gold to start with. So let's make some very strong choke points. And I accidentally called that early. My mistake for sure. But the plan that I had in mind is still good. Let's drop some fire. We don't want even a single wolf to escape. And right now, they're actually dangerous until we're able to clog up the ground. So we want to put our guys somewhere in the center here so that all three of these towers can, can collapse. I put this tower here because they're just going to hold back a number of guys and at level two they're strong enough to get some of the kills no we're too slow okay we're gonna try that again I accidentally hit uh, whatever the hotkey is to start this early and I think they kinda threw me off hmm I think our build was fine For honor and glory. For 
A lot of wolves. Archers ready. Charge. And we want to make this choke point here as high for the king. as we can. Like that. And instead of upgrading, let's just make this extra choke point Charge. up here. For honor and glory, dodge this for the king. Have at thee. Okay. I don't hate that. Charge. Ready. And let's upgrade the towers that we have that will almost certainly be giving us value. Bring these guys here. Making sure to use our abilities, of course. Nuke that wave. Let's upgrade there to support this side. Although I feel like this side is the danger zone. And it's a nail biter. There's lots of little guys who are dodging all of our attacks. Upgrade this so it can hit on the bridge. Good, and they're already in a good spot. Okay, let's upgrade them so that they can get in on this fight here. The difference between 7 and 11 and 4 and 6 damage is very apparent when you have this many low tier units. And we definitely want to upgrade this guy here. Reinforcing this side because they seem to be struggling. Did we get it? I think we got it. Good. That's the fun of the challenges. You really have to see what they're going to throw at you first. And because a lot of times you'll go in with a well balanced approach and it'll do something very specific. And if you try to go too well balanced, you're going to end up leaking just because you didn't perfectly counter it. And the challenge modes are set up so that you learn to counter certain things that the, the enemies are doing. And these are all good, but none of these are going to help us with the next challenge, which is, see we did iron mode, yes we did, let's do heroic here. Once again, no hero, but we do have access to all of our towers. Let's start with a similar build. Back this up. Get them as high up as we can. Yeah, let's call him. Yeah. 
Let's drop this before we start leaking. Because if we do call early, we, we're going to get the benefit from the reduced cooldown. Little bit of gold there. Here come the the bandits to wreck all of our poor little guys. up there. We'll call the next wave early because it's not that's not what's going to decide whether or not we leak right now. A little short on gold. All of our all of our towers are pretty weak. Tower can do the damage we need up here, and I think it can. Just piling on all of our guys there. Fortunately, our dwarven bombard is just shooting single targets, so we're not getting the value we need from it. Freedom! You're wasting all that potential splash damage whenever that's happening. Let's help this group up here. When these orcs get into range, I'm going to bomb them. That was a fine use. And he's, I think he's going to the left, so we need to hold him. And I don't think we're going to be calling any waves early. Upgrade this, we get the chance. And these healers are more dangerous. Than the actual ogre. If we can take out the healers, then we can bring down the ogre. No problem, we have lots of single target. We need to keep this healer back here and just hope that our, our DPS is enough. Really want to upgrade this. Almost got him. We're going to get a lot of gold when we do kill him.
very stressful. Now we have them coming down this path. At least one. And we can handle a small trickle of enemies at our last stop here. But we can't handle multiple big boys. So we need to delay, delay, delay. It would be great to upgrade this again. Hitting up to 74 damage in a shot is pretty huge. But I don't think we're going to get to that point. So let's get three fresh guys. And if they finally stop coming here, we got to kill one of these guys. There we go. And we recruited him at the last second. Can we stop him? No, one guy is going to make it through. Oh. Okay. What can we do differently? Maybe more mage towers? Could be the key to success here. I don't think this dwarven bombard did very much. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to focus on making a stronger choke point. Do have to make sure that we have something up here. Let's put these guys as high up as possible once again. Maybe just go like triple mage towers here. And then another barracks here. That might be fine. Let's try it. Let's see if it works. They're sending lots of people with armor. The only thing we have to be concerned about, we don't want to spam any type of tower too much because they will have the healers and our mage towers won't be able to do lots of damage to the healers. So maybe this can just be a tier 3 archer tower. A lot of range, it'll be able to hit, it'll basically never stop firing, so we can get some value from it that way. And with no one here blocking, we can see exactly where the wave is going. So we can use our reinforcements appropriately. So that's a kind of benefit to that. Although I can't help but feel like I'm missing out on value from having a Dwarven Bombard here, where they're clumped up. But if it works, it works. And we need this to upgrade to Tier 3 before it becomes effective in our strategy up there. Seems to be going fine. Pull the next wave early. We need the cash.
I like the mage tower placement of there last time. Really want to get this to tier three. We want to have at least one of our barracks upgraded for tougher guys. Let's drop some fire. Getting a little too strong up there. And boom, there we go. We have one stronger defensive unit and then another one just to, to take hits. And we're going to call early just because we really need the gold. doing well. And we knew a lot of the ogres were going to come this way, but we really don't want them to get healed by these healers. So hopefully they'll all group up here and we can kill them. And we did. Okay. Call down early, reduce our cooldowns, get off the double reinforcements. I'm starting to feel like our, our damage is a bit low. this when I can. Put some heavy damage on that ogre, upgrade them so that now this mage tower can fire onto this bridge for us. And it should tear up these brigands. Even though they have medium armor, this does bypass it. This is a bit spooky, but 278 we're gonna tweak these guys so that they come back and then go back to place which allows the ogre to move up just into range here it's a bit of a trick and we're sorely missing DPS in this in this position so more than doubling the strength of this one tower is gonna be worth it Let's get some knights at the back line. With their medium armor and higher health, they can take a lot of punishment from these ogres. And are we going to do it? And that's what I would have done next, obviously. Huge damage. And we did it. On the second try, not too bad. Get our last star here. Can't upgrade anything with one star. Um, I would probably reset here uh, at the beginning of the next level. Take all the points out of this and put them into something else. Getting cheaper mage towers and, and excuse me, dwarven towers is very valuable. Let's see what our next map is. Silver Oak Forest. I remember this map very well. There's actually a cool a cool like elven tower hideout thing that you can you can repair and recruit these elven units from. And we're going to get some new enemy types here, if I remember right. So let's plan for that. Let's reset. I like that. 
certainly getting at least tier two of all of those. And here, if I remember right, this is a very archer centric map. So let's increase the range. What does this do? Double damage, that's pretty sweet. You know what, what the heck, let's get that. If this is as archer centric as I remember, then we're going to have lots of archer towers and having them fully upgraded is going to be strong. So here we go. With Twin Rivers Pass blocked and after days of marching, we finally reach the Silver Oak Outpost, only to find its troop complement decimated. The garrison's men have endured several attacks recently and their scouts report an even greater enemy force approaching. Good thing elite ranger units are on the way to help us. So let's see, I don't think, yeah, we didn't unlock the next hero. Maybe after this map, we'll have Illyria Swiftwind. Hmm. She's one of my favorite heroes in the game. Let's go ahead to battle. Okay, and this is certainly the map that I remember. I will cleanse this land. Prepare for glory. And for now, enemies will come from this direction, split up and go this way. But later on, you'll see, probably not hard to guess what type of enemies are going to be coming from that direction. And here is a unique building that we can fully repair. You repair the building for 100 and it doesn't do anything. But then you start paying, I believe, 100 gold per and you can get as many as 4 elven archers. And I think we're going to do that. A lot of our key position, key buildings are here. Let's make some choke points. One here. And one here. And let's see. Get an archer tower here. When enemies finally start spawning, this will be able to hit all of them. And we can make another choke point here. Upgrade this. Let's just make a ton of archer towers. It's kind of what the game wants us to do anyway. Make another one here and then upgrade it and its range will be on this path. Let's bring our hero unit to the fore of the fight. So he'll level quickly. And here we go, right off the bat we get bandits and brigands. Summon, call early summon good strategy and right now this is a useless tower but we don't want it to be so we're gonna focus upgrade this and when it gets to level three it'll hit everything and here we go giant spiders new enemy resistant to magic so good thing we built archer towers they have a high magic resistance they're slow are they're fast rather than they have low health. So they're another low tier swarming unit. But archers do very well against them. They have low health. And let's upgrade that one more time. And call early. Let's stop them up down here with our reinforcements. And if no one's coming here, we definitely want to move our hero to the place where he'll be getting experience. Back him up with some little buddies. Alright, our first unique uh, tier 4 tower. They have the best range that we've unlocked so far. And really good 
fuel to fire. Now they're 230. This range is excellent. There's my hotkey there. And they do have... So 13 to 19 damage very fast. As opposed to... 10 to 16. And we're going to upgrade this one. It's in a very strategic spot. And we're going to look to upgrade this at some point soon. Let's get a couple more guys right in the center of this path here. And really block that up. And we can upgrade them. They're right at the front of the fight. Now they do have special abilities that we can unlock for them. Poison is very strong. It's going to make their attacks uh, somewhat unfocused. They'll seek to spread poison on every unit that comes into their range. But the poison does a good bit of damage. 15 damage is, is a lot. It's basically an attack spread over a couple seconds. Summon spread summon. And having a poison tower right at the start of both lanes He's going to put poison on all of these guys in addition to their, their already strong damage. So let's do that just to show you guys. It might be better to start spreading out our towers, getting more tower coverage. But this seems strong too. So here another new enemy, a warg. Magic resistance can dodge melee attacks very fast speeds. So there's just a stronger wolf. And these are the guys that actually, that do have the magic resistance. So when I first saw the wolves, I thought that they were wargs, essentially. Because the magic resistance does end up being very relevant. So you'll see they're poisoning all these different units. And we want to unlock that as well if we can. You know what, let's start building this, mostly so you guys can see what it is. First, let's not leak. Don't want to leak. That's for sure. Call our gentleman early. build something that's going to help us here as well. This will only help us here and here, but we can use this turn, this kind of easy turn of killing spiders to buff this up. So Sylvan Elf, Masters of the Bow and Blade, they're very expensive and if they die you don't just get them free one back, they actually die. But they have very long range on their bows. So that's why we put this barracks here to kind of block for them. Oh no. You stay there. So matriarch. Magic resistant. And they spawn spiderlings. And they cost more lives so we don't want to let them get through. They also do decent damage. Kind of tempted. Let's let's summon early for twenty. For twenty gold, we can do that. And we'll let our hero soak all this damage for us. I will cleanse this land. Reinforce. Call early again for twenty-two. And if we're going to invest in this at all, we want to get all of them. Because they're much more effective with their DPS when you get all of them. When we do unlock an achievement, Forest Diplomacy, for getting those guys. And I place them as far down this path as they can. That way they can cover this as well with their with their really powerful power. They're really powerful. They're, uh, they're really high attack damage. Their range damage is pretty nuts. And we're going to upgrade this tower because it's another one that affects both sides of the board. Call early, reinforce again. 
the end, guys. If you ever feel the urge to say something really stupid, like really powerful power, just resist that urge. Yeah, and there they two shot these little gentlemen. We're going to upgrade them. Their only job is to protect these very expensive elf units. We don't want anyone getting onto them and killing them. Cannon fodder is another achievement unlocked. I'm assuming that's because we've lost a lot of these soldiers. Since soldier units are what's coming on this side and the high magic resistance comes down this side and the high physical resistance is coming down this side, this is, and as I say that, the wargs show up with their uh, high magic resistance. But we might actually get into another new unit here. Not yet. This is the last wave, so this should be it. No, here we go, new enemy, Marauders. Medium armor costs three lives. They're very slow, but they do a lot of damage, and that's what the wizard towers are going to be good against. They're faster than the ogres. They have a little bit less hit points, but they do have medium armor, and they attack a lot faster as well. We've been kind of saving our fiery bombard for that, and you see they're actually able to chunk down our hero pretty well. Rank 3 Wizard Tower will one-shot the little guys nearly when it has good RNG, when it gets closer to the 74 mark and to the, the 40 mark. And that's it, we've done it. Nice. Get our three stars. And we unlock the new hero. And it is Alaria Swiftwind. So we're just going to start using her. They're both fine. But I want to show you guys Alaria. She has some very cool, unique abilities. It's as silent as the night, light as a feather, and deadly beautiful. Too many have fallen by her charming gaze, and many more by her fatal bow. She has multi shot, so it's exactly what it sounds like. She shoots multiple magical arrows, and. Call of the Wild, she summons a cat, a panther, to come and fight with her. So she, you get two bodies for the price of one when you're trying to clog up a lane, and she's essentially, she does the DPS of a range tower, of an archer tower, and is very strong. So let's see, this video is going on, we're getting, we're closing in on the hour mark, but I want to do these for you guys. So, no soldiers here in the iron challenge, and upgrades are level 3. So, let's adjust our upgrades, get our level 3 of everything that we can. Hmm, I don't think, well, let's see, let's reset one more time. We can't use our soldiers. So there's no point in upgrading them. Let's get these upgrades here. And... Reducing the cooldown is excellent, so let's, let's grab that. And that's going to be good for the Iron Challenge. Let's check that out. Okay, and it gives us two of these. Sylvan Elf buildings. Hmm. Matriarchs and giant spiders. Brigands and marauders. Okay. Hmm. I don't have any secret strats for this. It's been a long time since I've played it. But I do think that if we upgrade this, they do so much damage, we just have to be microwing them. Wherever the enemies are, we don't want them to be. We want them to move out of the way so they can shoot. I 
the light of the moon. Yeah, let's get them all the way down there. And as much overlapping fire as possible. So let's call the wave. By the light of the moon. Place these guys forward. We'd love to upgrade this with poison as soon as possible. And we're going to be looking to move these guys as soon as it becomes dangerous. Call down the fire. Let's get the cooldown going. We do have a 10 second shorter cooldown thanks to that upgrade. Don't want to neglect this side because the matriarchs are going to start spawning very rapidly. Protect our investment. Keep our mages out of harm's way. Our our elves, rather. We don't want them to be fighting thugs. They're a hundred gold apiece. Bad, not bad. Soften them up some more, put another strong tower down here. They do so much damage that these little little thug guys, these little bandits can't reach them. Make sure we're putting our things in the right place. be a good place to put poison if we get the chance we move them up to be in range here and then we can move them back we don't want them to ever just be sitting doing nothing Increase to 30 damage a second, it's much better. Don't want our precious elves taking damage. Let's get the Wrath of the Forest. It locks guys. You see a little wizard appears here. To denote that you have that upgrade. And we didn't get to showcase it there. But it would have rooted enemies on both sides and done damage to them. It's very strong which is why it's very expensive. And let's reset again. Because now we have access to tier 3. Upgrades for the heroic version of this. So let's jump in. Okay. I think that's kind of an auto build. Choke points going again. Let's upgrade this to get the range. And see how this goes. Very tempting to call early here. I think I will. 
We're gonna try and nuke these guys as they get closer. them at the last second to make them stronger right before they die. Reinforce. Ooh, really relying on the sharpshooter tower. Come on, we don't want to leak. Second. Okay, that was not probably the strategy. Let's try and do something here. By the light of the world, by the light of the world is changed. By the light of the moon. Get our guys there. We can make our last position here. I think that's always fine. And then regardless, we want a tower here, and something else to block the spiders here. Alright, let's go, let's see how that works. We're going to prioritize upgrading this to hit 3 units at once. Or th three units at once to hit multiple lanes at the same time. And the elves are doing good work. Call early. Trying to force them into this one choke point when we don't have the towers to enforce that. Which is leading to our little footmen getting overrun too easily. They were just getting overwhelmed by the amount of DPS when what we needed to do was take advantage of these three lanes and split them up in a manageable, in three manageable waves for the high DPS of these. Elven archers to start kicking in. Almost have this at tier 3. We're going to call early. And upgrade it. Really want to get poison. Poison is very effective against the heavy armored units. Their armor does no good against poison. See how much damage they're doing per shot. They're doing fine. It's 250 for that. It's quite expensive. And I think instead I'm just gonna block this up even more. Maybe get Wrath of the Forest if I end up with enough gold. We're already on wave four. Poison is just so good, especially if you can get it to tier three. The poison effect itself will kill weak units after just putting one shot on them. Could also get a Dwarven Bombard here and bring these guys down. That wouldn't be bad for clearing out the spiders. And it's so much cheaper after that upgrade. It used to be 220, now it's 198 to get the artillery piece. Very effective against spiders and very effective against the spiders that the matriarch spawned. See if these, yeah, the armored guys split off. 
The weak guys go top to get picked off by the archers. This is all going quite well. And we want to get this poison ASAP, so let's get it. Killed here. That was 400 gold down. That's awful. We're gonna upgrade there because I think that was the problem. Oh, without that DPS, we really got messed up. Man, we're gonna leak there. I lost my attention for one second on those elves. And we got messed up. Hmm. Okay, guys, I think that's going to be it. We're heading over an hour for this video. Uh, I can try that again on my own, or I can do it at the beginning of the next video. Or we can just bypass it and move on to the next stage. You don't want to do the same thing over and over again. I know that can get boring. I may do that off camera and then related to you guys what my working strategy was. I think we had it there and I just lost focus on that. I thought that top corner was fine when in reality it needed some bolstering. I didn't expect that huge wave of bandits with their high DPS to to get into there so easily. So we unlocked a hero today. We did two maps and our next map is a fun one. It's the Citadel. So we'll look forward to that and once again, my name is Brett, and my channel is Good Talk Gaming. And if you enjoyed this video and you haven't subscribed already, please do. It's going to help me out a lot. Uh, like the video, and leave a comment for me. And you'll be one of my first commenters. I will respond to commenters. And hopefully we can get some kind of dialogue going, get the channel growing, and have more people to talk to, have more people to play with. So... Without further ado, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one.